Nothing on the Bonnell Foundation's Living with Cystic Fibrosis podcast should be considered medical advice. Medical advice can only come from your CF physician. Cystic fibrosis can be a devastating diagnosis, but living with the disease can bring positivity and a new appreciation for each day. From the Bonnell Foundation in Detroit, Michigan, it's the Living with Cystic Fibrosis podcast, sponsored by Beatrice, Genentech, and Vertex. Here's your host, Laura Bonnell. Just about everyone in the CF community knows who Andy Lippman is. Andy and his older sister, Wendy, were born with cystic fibrosis. Sadly, Wendy only lived 16 days. And that's when the Wish for Wendy Foundation was born. Andy also has a younger sister, Emily, who was adopted. To raise funds for his foundation, Andy has written several books that fall under the CF Warrior Project name. And Andy calls it a movement. He has raised millions of dollars to help fund research and to raise awareness. Andy lives in Atlanta, Georgia with his wife, Andrea, and teenage daughter, Avery, and son, Ethan. Andy's fourth book, The CF Warrior Project, 65 Stories of Triumph Against Cystic Fibrosis, Volume 2, can be purchased on Amazon and other booksellers. Andy Lippman, thank you so much. Welcome to the Living with Cystic Fibrosis podcast. Great to be able to talk with you because we see each other every day on social media um, and have been in touch. And it's wonderful to be able to talk with you and share the wonderful news about your latest book. But first, I wanted to catch up and get everyone else caught up a little bit about you. How are you doing? How's your health? How are things going? Um, things are going pretty well. Um, I just had COVID for the first time. I was COVID positive a couple of weeks ago. And luckily, you know, I did all right. It was all up in my head and everything. And uh, it took about a week and a half to get through it, but I did. But health-wise, you know, I'm 49 years old with cystic fibrosis. I mean, what can I complain about? You know, things are going pretty well. And that's wonderful to hear. Do you have plans yet for your 50th? I mean, Fabulous milestone for everyone, but especially people with cystic fibrosis. Yeah, I think my wife and I are going to do, she's turning 50. Uh, oh, wow. I just told her age. Whoops. No, uh, <laughs> uh, it's okay. Um, it's okay. So we're going to have a birthday together. We're going to celebrate together, have a big old you know, event and just uh, really enjoy the milestone. You know, it's crazy. I never would have thought I'd reach 50. Uh, you know, as, as hopeful as I am, honestly, I was just hoping for 30. I mean, so uh, here being uh, almost 50 years old and with so many breakthroughs in the CF community and so many more to come, it's just really, really an exciting time and uh, looking forward to turning the big 5 And so when you were old enough to realize what cystic fibrosis was, were you thinking 30 was the dream? Is that what you're saying? Um, yeah, I mean, not necessarily that then I was just scared to death, you know, because when I was about eight or nine, I had read an encyclopedia that people with CF don't normally live to the age of 25. Uh, later, I would find out the life expectancy when I was born was only 16 years. So to me, I, I didn't really have an age in mind. I was just scared. But when I got to college, when things finally started to improve in college, yeah, I, I did start to think of, you know, I'd really like to hit 30. You know, I'd like to go beyond that, you know, and then when I hit 30, I was like, maybe I could easily at 40. And then uh, now I'm just like, you know, I'm just gonna live every day. And, you know, whatever happens, happens. But um, I've been pretty fortunate. So I'm just, you know, taking it day by day. You know, I'm not always optimistic every single day. I think that's impossible for someone. I think sometimes we see social media, we're like, he's always happy. No, but you know, everybody goes through their tough times. I deal with depression and anxiety, and I'm always open about that. But for the most part, I'm doing really, really well. And I'm just looking at every day as a blessing and a gift. And you talk about mental health, I go to therapy every week as a caregiver of two daughters with cystic fibrosis. I think it's really important so that I can support them. Tell me how the therapy helps you in your mental health. And by the way, I feel like you're honest on social media. Um, You're all over the place on all platforms. And I do feel like you share your ups and downs on social media. And I appreciate that. For you, what does therapy mean? Does it mean going every week? Does it mean pumping yourself up? What does it entail for you? Sure. I've always said, I I use this analogy, I'm a big baseball fan. So what I say is the greatest pitcher in the world still needs a pitching coach. And um, for me, not the greatest pitcher in the world, not the greatest anything in the world, but just a regular human being needs somebody to get in my ear and to, to help me when I'm going through a tough time. And sometimes I go every week, 
Sometimes I go every few weeks. Sometimes I go it monthly. It just depends on how I'm doing. But I just need that to stay as optimistic as possible. And then I do see in a way, and this is not to be, you know, arrogant or anything like that, but I do see myself as somebody in the CF community who inspires other young CF patients or their parents. And I, and I want to stay as positive as I can. But at the same time, like you mentioned, it's good that I'm as honest as I can. I tell people when things are tough and maybe I lost somebody with the disease who's a good friend of mine, maybe younger than me, maybe my age. And that's always very difficult. And I deal with regular normal stuff. You know, it's not just the CF side of it. Yeah, I've got two teenagers. I've got a wife and we all deal with our own things. And uh, that's just kind of what therapy has done for me. It really does help. And I feel like, you know, I work out to get my physical strength. I do my CF treatments to keep my health, my lungs and my digestive system. So I use the therapy to help up here. You know, 49 years ago, there wasn't newborn screening for your parents. So Mm-mm. how did they find out that you and your older sister had cystic fibrosis. Yeah. So my sister was born three years before me and she just wasn't growing. And I think they described her as kind of sickly. And so I guess they did the the sweat test then and um, knew that she had, see, I think she also had a blockage in her intestines, you know, the meconium ileus. And so they knew and uh, she only lived 16 days. So it's a little bit of blur from what they've told me some of it. But, you know, when I was born three years later, I also had meconium ileus and they knew there was a chance that I would have actually a pretty good chance that I would have. That was the 25%. But knowing that my sister had had it before me, they, they knew what to look for. And so I went and had the blockage removed Eggleston at, um, near Emory hospital. And later on, they diagnosed me after the sweat test with cystic fibrosis. So it was one of those things, there was a newborn screening and that's unfortunate. And there are a lot of people that have gotten through without being tested and knowing that they had CF. And, As well. You know, I've written books about people who've gone even past 50 to 60 years old, you know, with the disease and finally finding out they have CF after all these little symptoms they've been going through back and forth. They're like, oh, that's it. And it's like, I can't even imagine going even a day without knowing. And so um, I've been fortunate, you know, it's a mixed blessing. It was unfortunate I had it, it was fortunate they found it so soon. Absolutely. Since then, you and your family have raised awareness about cystic fibrosis, and now your fourth book is out, um, The CF Warrior Project, 65 Stories of Triumph Against Cystic Fibrosis, Volume 2. Right. And uh, people can purchase it on Amazon. And I'm honored to be in this book. It's wonderful, and I can't wait to read the stories of everyone else who's in it. Tell us why... You decided on a volume two. Well, first off, you know, when I wrote the first one, there were so many people we had, I hate to say it, we had to leave off because there was a certain limit that they gave us. And I was the first time I'd written a book and I felt bad that I told people, hey, I'm going to put as many of you as I can in this book. You know, I'm looking forward to it. Then all of a sudden, when you talk to a publisher, hey, there's a limit, you, you know, a certain amount of pages you can have. And so I was like, well, I got to do a few more at least, you know, and get everybody I can in this. And so um, after the first book, I really almost instantly started working on the second book and started reading online about people and saying, oh, this would be a good person to kind of has a different story. It's not necessarily the story itself, but how different they are from each other. Because you want to kind of tell where if somebody with cystic fibrosis, hey, this person has more similar stories to me. And so that's kind of what I was doing. And we really found some great stories. And I also want to do some not just about people with CF, but like yourself, someone who advocates for those with CF or has a family member with CF or started a foundation for CF or just anything that is around CF. In fact, in the book, we interview two of the geneticists that came up, found the gene for cystic fibrosis. And that was really exciting kind of to hear their story. You know, I'd read about it before in different documents, but I never really heard their stories, you know, where they came from. How did this become a big deal to them? Why did they want to do it? I wanted to tell the story behind it. When you read this book, you'll see these are stories. This isn't just, well, I have CF and I'm alive or I have CF or my family has CF. And so that's why we started foundation. This is how it started, why we got involved, you know, what have we done to stay involved? And that's why I wrote it. I think the first one was really good and I loved it, but we didn't really tell as much of the story as we could have. And I think this time we tell a lot more of the story and we tell it from, like I said, people with CF and people who just have a lot of family or friends or somebody with cystic fibrosis that they want to advocate for. 
And I, like I said, I'm really excited to read it. I know um, Beth Van Stone, uh, one of the CF moms in Canada, is in the book and so many others. And it sounds like Dr. Francis Collins is in the book also, uh, who we all love for everything he's done for cystic fibrosis, raising awareness, discovering the gene. You know, he was here at the University of Michigan for a long time and while the gene was discovered. So yeah, you have a connection there. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. He did a podcast with me, too, about once the new CF modulator came along and about hope for the future as well. So I can't wait. So tell me some more about all the people who are in your book and what you hope people get out of it. Sure. I mean, so we have a wide variety of people. We have Dorothy Tolkien, who she's one of the founders of the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation in her 90s now. And um, she has a daughter with cystic fibrosis who amazingly is still here, still alive, doing wonderfully. So we tell her story and how she got involved with CF. We tell stories of like Beth Banstone, you mentioned how she has fought for drugs to be approved in her country in Canada. We have celebrities like Colton Underwood. Colton Underwood was The Bachelor a uh, couple of seasons. And he talks about he started a Colton's Legacy Foundation. They donate vests to people around the United States. And his goal is to get all 50 states is to, and he, what he does is he goes and visits, brings the vest, and it helps people that can't afford a vest. And it's really wonderful. And then there are others. We have transplant survivors. We have one woman, Amanda, who's had three double lung transplants, and she's around 30 years old. Um, we've got a couple others too, you know, Dylan Mortimer, who does the book cover for us is one of the most famous artists, uh, especially with cystic fibrosis in the country, in the world actually. And he does the, helps with the cover, but he's also had two double lung transplants and he's done an amazing job. And so there's just so many different stories. Um, we've got a few other celebrities, um, Justin Balboni, Baldoni, excuse me, who is the director of Five Feet Apart, the biggest box office hit for something related to cystic fibrosis. And it's just, it's really cool. All the stories that we have around these people that, you know, Justin became really close friends with Claire Wineland. Mm -hmm. Claire, you know, was one of the most famous CF, uh, I would say most famous CF people around the world before she passed away. And Justin developed a very deep friendship with her. And he started, he did the movie basically in memory of her. And so it's it's really cool, all these people. And then you got Melissa Yeager, yeah. who Melissa is Claire's mom. And Melissa's in the book as well and tells her story and how she start, he, she's kept a foundation going and does things like the Clarity Ball to raise money for those with cystic fibrosis, those in the hospital, which was something that Claire always wanted. And that was the foundation they started together. So it's, it's really, really, really cool, all the people involved. When you read it and have been editing it and going through it, I mean, I know you have always thought we have a wonderful CF community, but when you're reading this and going through it all and talking to people, are you just regenerated as far as optimism goes with everybody and all that they're doing? It's inspiring. It really is. And I'm not just saying that because I wrote it or anything like that. I'm saying it because maybe I wrote it, but a lot of the people, when they gave me their story, they were writing it themselves. They were telling me their story and I told it to my best ability, their version. And it's really, it's so, it, you can feel it in your heart. You know, all these people, all the love that they have for the cystic fibrosis community and those that they do this for, or, you know, like I said, we have a lot of people that are patients with CF who either, maybe they've lost a sibling to CF. So we have one who has sadly lost a parent who had CF and they will not stop until we have a cure. And it's really, it's just great to see that the passion, the love for the community. And that's why we, we say, you know, for our CF community, that's why we do. That's why all these people are still involved. As the title says, you have 65 stories in there. Do you have pictures in there as well? And is it equally people with CF and parents or is it just a mix up of however it worked out? So it's a little bit more people with CF, um, but not that much more. And there are pictures of every single person involved, some of them with their um, families, depending on if they wanted to put their families in the picture or just happened to be, it was the picture that seemed to work really well for the book. But um, we have a lot of people, you know, there's 65 different pictures and they're actually 66 because there's one where it's a husband wife team that are both, one is a researcher, one is a doctor, or one is a scientist, one is a doctor 
in Israel and their husband and wife, wow. they worked together and they, you know, started, you know, they're working on all these drugs and they worked in the United States. In fact, one of them, the wife, Batsheva, she was one of the ones who helped find the gene when she was working in Canada. So it's really quite cool. You know, all these different relationships, different countries. We have a bodybuilder who has CF. Uh, she is in Ireland. And so it's just all different types of people. We've got uh, someone who is, who's won so many medals at the transplant games. And she kind of stopped swimming after she'd had her transplant. And then all of a sudden she got inspired to do it again. And she's won all these medals. And it's just, it's just incredible the different types of stories that are involved. I think people will really get a kick out of it. It is. And I can't wait to get my hands on the book because I cannot wait to go through all these stories. I think it will be so inspiring to people who have CF or caregivers like myself, parents of kids with cystic fibrosis. Are you getting feedback from parents like myself or people that are in your book who are excited to be featured? Absolutely. We've got about, I think about five or six parents that are in it, four or five moms and one dad. And they're all really excited. And this is something, you know, that, that was another reason I wrote it is um, I lost my mom in November of 2020 when I just started writing the book. And one of the things I remember is how inspiring she was for the CF community. She and my dad won an award for 50 years of doing things in the CF community from the CF Foundation, the Georgia chapter. And so I remember that and I really wanted, so I, I dedicated this book to my mom. And I know she had a perspective of how tough it is to be a parent with CF. And she would talk to other parents that would just had newborns with CF. And so that was the reason I really wanted to tell it from the parent side as well. Uh, me being a parent myself, but not understanding what it's like to have two kids or one kid even with CF, I wanted to just tell it from the parent side. And that, and you know, we do we tell it from parent side, we tell it some from the sibling side. And we really want to get it out there that there's so many different sides to this. It's a CF warrior, you know, I think originally when people heard the term CF warrior, they thought, oh, it's somebody with CF. But to me, it's not just someone with CF. It's someone who's fighting CF. And that's not necessarily mean that's because you have it in your system, in your genes. It's because you have someone you love who has it and you want to push this for them. You want to advocate for them. And so that's why I want to make sure there were people not just with CF, but those who fight for those with CF in the book. And I really appreciate that and other moms I've talked to and dads as well, because I think for a lot of us, I never thought there's no trauma for me. This is my kids' trauma. They're the ones with CF. I'm fine. And then you realize all the trauma you've gone through with your kids and how you have to be the one who really doesn't blink through it all. You have to be strong and get them through it until their adult years and then still through the adult years, helping them transition into doing their own insurance and all of that. So, right. yeah, I think sometimes you don't realize and then you see someone else's story and you're grateful that, oh, my gosh, we do carry a lot. Yeah. Did you find that in reading? Sure, I really did. And that, again, remind me of my mom who when, you know, sometimes I would tell her what's going on with me or my health, she would start crying. And she's like, either happy or sad. Like if I was going a tough time, she would just be like, Andy, we're going to get you through this. We fought since you were born, all this. But if things were good, she's like, I always knew, you know, that you would get through this and all this. And one of the things I, I said about my mom um, is um, as tough as it was to lose her, it was awful that she didn't have to bury a second child. To me, that was so important. You know, she buried my sister. They had to bury my sister, but she didn't have to bury me. And that, to me, mm -hmm. I think in some ways, deep down, she would be happy about that. You know, I uh, miss her terribly. But this book, a lot of it was me thinking about what would my mom want to know about these people? You know, what would what was her perspective? And when I hear like a story like yours or Claire's mom or Maddie's mom, mm -hmm. You know, I, I think about, geez, what did they go through? You know, when you're a kid, you don't think about as much. What did my mom or dad go through? You're thinking about this stinks. You know, you're thinking about, I have a life expectancy. I have this, I have that. I do my therapy every day. I have to take pills. But you don't think they have to help you learn to take pills. They have to do your therapy, you know, your postural drainage every day. Right. But you don't think about that because you're a kid. And all you think about is what are my friends going to think? But, you know, after reading all this, after reading these stories and really getting into them, it is, oh, 
you know, you really start to feel it. You really start to see um, what they went through. And now being a dad myself, you know, and anytime my kids are dealing with something, now I, I think, huh, you know, um, what did my mom have to, my mom and dad have to deal with? It really makes you think. It hits the heartstrings. It really does. I know your kids are teenagers. Did they read the first book? Do they have any interest? I mean, they're teenagers. They might not. They may just think dad's normal. He just does, you know, you do your best every day and they're used to it. But do they look forward to the books? Do they understand as much as they can for being teenagers? You know, to be honest with you, it's not really their thing. And it's not because, you know, they've lived with CF all their life, you know, with me having it. Right. And so I think for them, their normalcy is, yeah, me doing a vest, they're used to it. Me taking pills, they're used to it. Me coughing, they're used to it. I don't know that they necessarily are interested in reading it. You know, I, I always give them copies of every book that I write. And I say, if you want to read it, you read it. But I get it if you don't, you know, it's not, doesn't have to be your thing. Um, but both of them do a lot for charity. That's what makes me and my wife really happy is they're both very charitable kids. But as far as CF, I think it's so real to them. They see it all the time that they take a break. But I will say for both my kids, especially my daughter, the funny thing is you're like, you know, my dad is just like everyone else, but he has a TikTok. <laughs> so what's funny is her friends see the TikTok and they're like, we watch your dad all the time. She's like, oh, <laughs> you know, like funny, but you know, like, oh my God. But I try to make CF fun. You know what I mean? I don't come home like, yeah, tough day to day. You know, right. I, I try to make it as positive as possible. I don't talk about it a lot. I did when they were kids and not a lot, but I tried to inform them what it was and all this. And I think I have a couple of videos on YouTube where I talk to them and explain to them what CF was, what CF is and have them kind of tell me themselves what they think it is. And so that's kind of what we did. But beyond that, no, I don't let them get involved unless they want to be. I don't want to be the one to push it on them if they want to learn more about it or, or give. You know, my daughter has helped with Wish for Wendy, which is the charity we started. My son is gotten a little interested and, in, you know, when are we going to do another softball tournament? You know, since COVID, we kind of stopped doing them for a while, but, you know, they care, they love me, but at the same time, I think they're teenagers and they have their own things that they deal with. And so I don't push it on them, but they're great. And I'm happy with who they've become and who they're going to be, hopefully. And that's wonderful. I was also thinking about newly diagnosed parents on why this book would be good too, because you get such a range of experiences and knowledge, and you're so overwhelmed at diagnosis. And initially, we, you know, my girls are 25 and 28, so we didn't have initially a lot of parents to talk to. You're figuring out who the CF community is and how to find them. And I think this book, and I'm sure you would agree, will give them hope and a range of information, do you think? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's one of the goals of this book is to give hope. Every book that I've written, one of my main goal is hope, you know, is to give people hope. Because as I like to say, it sounds kind of ironic almost now. Um, I tell people, if you're going to have CF, this is the time to have it. Yeah, because there's so many breakthroughs going on. There's so many things to look forward to. We're, I feel like we're so close to a cure. I want people to have hope. You know, it's, you know, and sometimes... I don't have to say a word because I'm 49 years old with cystic fibrosis. What more hope can you need? All right. You know, but not everyone's story is the same. And I tell people, some are like, well, why do some people pass away before you and all this? I'm like, listen, I credit it to hard work and doing my stuff and all this stuff, but there's dumb luck too. I've had dumb luck and I'm grateful for it. But, you know, there are people who have worked just as hard as me, maybe even harder, and it just didn't work out. But that didn't mean that CF beat them. It just meant that their body just couldn't handle it any further. Their minds, they had it, you know, they wanted it. And, you know, we dedicate this book in many ways to people with CF who have passed away because they have really helped those of us that are still here. You don't lose the rank of CF warrior because you pass away. Uh, you always keep that. And so we have so many CF warriors to be grateful to, and we continue to do that. There is a lot of hope. And yes, we do tell a few stories of people who have passed from CF, but like we said, things have gotten so great with research and everything else that people are living longer and stronger. We got people in their 70s. Now, I, I read about there was somebody in their 80s with cystic fibrosis. And it's just, it's amazing. And one day people will say, I'm 75 years old with cystic fibrosis. They'll just say, I'm 75 years old. And that's that's the goal. You know, I'm, I may pass away one day, but it's not going to be because of cystic fibrosis. It's just going to be with cystic fibrosis, the way I think of it. That's a beautiful way to put it. 
Tell us a couple more stories of people that have CF that you have featured in your book. Um, I know they all inspire you, but maybe some that you can think of now that stand out a little bit. Sure. I would say, and I kind of mentioned her before, Erin. Erin is someone, she has CF. She's had a double lung transplant. And at first, after she had the transplant, she had scars from the transplant. And she, at first, was really embarrassed by them and tried to hide them. And now she is showing them off and saying, you know, this is what I've done. I've had a transplant. I've survived. I'm back in, you know, I'm swimming, you know, I'm winning medals. And I'm not ashamed of this. She did a Sports Illustrated type shoot where she showed her scars. She is proud of who she is and what she's been through. And I just, I love those kind of stories, you know, of just, people who inspire. And then there's somebody just turned 60, actually, from Arkansas. Uh, His name's Terry. And Terry wasn't diagnosed with CF until his mid-50s. Wow. And the reason he didn't get diagnosed is he is African-American. Oh, Terry Wright you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, Terry Wright. They were saying you couldn't have CF. And finally, they diagnosed him with it. And now he started his own foundation for African-Americans with cystic fibrosis. He and his wife, Michelle, have started their own foundation. And it's amazing. And they've gotten all these people involved. And they've won many awards, like the CF Star in Arkansas. And these are the kind of stories I love that people, you know, they just keep fighting and they don't give up. And yeah, they have cystic fibrosis. And there's another gentleman named Travis. You may know who Travis is. Mm -hmm. Travis has his own foundation in Florida. And he has a daughter with cystic fibrosis. Piper, yep. Yep. He has two sisters with cystic fibrosis. And he recently was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis. So all four of them have CF in in different genes. So it's a really cool story. And he tells how he came up with uh, Piper's Angels uh, Foundation and how they have something called crossing for a cure. It's just amazing. These stories of all these people who continue to inspire it. It started out. He was just, he was doing it for his daughter and look what you know, he's got it too. And he's got family with it and they're, they're raising a ton of money for this. And uh, just really proud of all these different people and Terry, I'm so proud of him and his wife. And it's funny when you say, can you name it? I can name all 65 stories. Right. And it would not be that hard for me to do it, especially the moms. Yeah, the moms, it just really, oh my gosh, it just really, you know, Melissa, Claire's mom, Mm -hmm. Melissa Yeager, her story, wow. You know, you just see all she's been through, but she continues to fight for Claire, you know, and that's, it's just wonderful. And she's keeping Claire's story alive, which I love. Yeah. I love all the cross promotion. Okay. First of all, we all know the same people. We have such a tight knit CF community and Melissa learned how to board on the, I guess it was the ocean with Piper's angels, help them raise money. That's right. You know, she did that. It's just wonderful. She trained for it and worked with Travis and we all worked together. And then you're featuring everybody's stories. Yeah. I don't know if you've heard of the Casalinas. Do you know the Casalinas? I don't know. Mm -mm. So Marguerite, she had a daughter with CF and has a son with CF. The daughter passed away. Um, The son has CF. He's now a father himself, and it's amazing. I mean, she's raised so much money for the CF Foundation in the U.S. Wow. She and her husband have had so many different positions, Mark, her husband. And it's just amazing. All these people, all these stories. Again, another parent who's going out there and has taken, sadly, a loss, but has turned it into championing for the cause. And she has done so much, and like you, like Melissa, like Beth, like Travis. I mean, there's so many people out there that have done so much like Doris, you know, 90 something years old, has still has a daughter here with CF and she, you know, helped found the foundation. We actually also interviewed Bob Bell. Uh Bob was the CEO of the CF Foundation. Uh, He's a scientist himself, helped invest in all these companies and all these people have done so much for the CF community. And that was the other reason is I want people to know a little bit more about the history and why these people got involved. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. And also, is it correct, like the funds from your book, do they go to the Wish for Wendy Foundation, your foundation, the proceeds? It's a not-for-profit book. So all the profits will go to any CF-related charities. You know, 
we have our own foundation, the Wish for Wendy Foundation. So some will go there, but there are other foundations involved. Like everybody in the book, we look at, you know, your foundation. We've got so many others. We're going to give money to that. You know, just got to make a profit, which I, I believe we will on this book. But either way, we're going to send funds to all these foundations because they're doing what we want to do. And that's to help the CF community. And it's, and it's all different, as you know. There's some that are raising for research. There's some who are raising for athletics. There's some for college scholarships. There's some for help in the hospitals. There's some for, you know, just financial help. There are people that go through so much help to get a vest or medication, you know, to afford it. It's really there's so many different realms in the CF world that, you know, we want to give in, in some form or fashion to that. And so that's another reason we're doing the book is to help these foundations and to bring them to light. You know, not all of them get the attention that either mine or yours does. And we want people to know there are different foundations out there that are doing something to help those in the CF community. And we're really proud of them. So Absolutely. And what are your hopes moving forward for the future, your future, the CF community's future? Yeah, you know, cure. Absolutely. The first, well, I would say, first of all, I would like to have 100% of people have a modulator. That would be my, my number one goal is first to get to that status where, yes, you still have cystic fibrosis, but you can take down the anxiety a little bit about the, the disease. But obviously, number two, and it's the big one, is the cure. I really hope, you know, whatever it is um, that we find a cure for cystic fibrosis. I know there are so many people in so many different countries working on something. And I hope in the next few years we have something. You know, I want the newest generation of people with CF. Uh, to one day say, yeah, I'm, I used to have cystic fibrosis. I don't have it anymore. But, you know, that's the dream of mine. So me personally, that's my hopes. And obviously me personally, I look at my my family, my wife and kids, and I just, I know that CF is a big deal because I talk about it a lot and I put it out there a lot, but I just want them to live the lives that they want, be happy and just, um, you know, it's been hard ever since COVID. You know, COVID was so hard because people like me with the condition, with CF, I couldn't go out for a long time. And when I did, I had to mask up and double mask in cases, you know, and it's, it's gotten a little bit easier, but it's still, it's always out there. And that's always, you know, it's tough when you have a lung disease, but I just want everybody to be able to live a normal life and be happy. You know, I, I like to say, make America kind again. You know, I want us to just be happy. You know, I just want this world to love each other and to work well together. And cystic fibrosis is proof of that. People from all these different countries are helping each other out. You know, why can't the world itself be that way? That's my hope. It's just that we can, the next generation of people with CF can have a promising future and, and a happy future, not just promising, but happy. Just work well together. Mm -hmm. And that's a beautiful way to end this podcast. Unless there was anything else you wanted to add about your book, I think your words are a beautiful way to end it. Um, and people can get your book on Amazon and other booksellers, correct? Yeah, it'll be on Barnes & Noble, be on Amazon. Uh, you can look on our website. It'll have ways to get there. That's the cfwarriorproject.org. And you'll see a lot about it. You'll also, if you go onto that site, you'll see all the warriors that are in this book. There's a link that you can click on. It'll kind of say, you know, a quote from them or, you know, their name, their age. And um, we, the youngest person with CF on there actually is six years old. He wrote his own book. Wow. Yeah, with his mom, you know, he's six years old, wrote a uh -huh. book because he and his mom looked for books about CF that they could explain to his friends, six, seven years old. They couldn't find anything. And so he said to his mom, why don't we write our own? And so they wrote their own little book. These are the kind of things that I love to hear. You know, this, this book goes from six to a doctor who's now in his 70s who has CF and wasn't supposed to live long. Is that Dr. Quinton? Uh, no, but I did have him in the first book. Ah, I won't tell everybody, but I'll just say that this doctor uh, works at Duke University, so you'll see who it is. But yeah, he's he's a doctor at Duke. But I did write about Dr. Quentin from uh, UC San Diego in the first book. Wonderful. He's amazing, too. I mean, all these guys are just... Incredible. Really incredible stories. But yeah, yes, you'll see about that. I'm just amazed. I mean, I never thought someone with cystic fibrosis could live in their 70s. And you got, you know, in the first book, we talked about Jerry Cahill, if you know who Jerry is. yeah. I think everyone does. He's done a ton of work. And uh, Jerry's become a really good friend of mine. I'm really proud of all he's done. And um, I love how he always says, be your own superhero. You know, and I think that's great advice for the kids. You know, look up to yourself a little bit because you've been through a lot and you're doing a lot. You're going to inspire a lot of people. That makes you kind of a superhero. I agree. Yeah. Wonderful words. Um, 
thank you, Andy Lippman. And thanks for the tease. Everybody's going to have to look for that Duke University, right? Hospital. Yeah, that's what I do. I, I like to tease it around a little bit. And like, where's that doctor? Right? Absolutely. We're going to all look for that doctor first when we get the book, maybe. But so many other people are in it that obviously we didn't mention. I can't wait to read it. So thanks for all you do in the CF community and for getting this book out there so more people can learn about it. Uh, well, thank you, Lori. Thanks for this podcast and thanks for what you and your foundation do. And I'm excited that your story's in there and it tells a lot of great things how you got started. And it's, I won't give that away either, but it's a great story. I know a lot of people who are watching this probably already know it, but it's just, it's amazing how you got involved and how like you were just like, I'm ready to go. Let's do this. You know, it's like you and your husband. So it's such a cool thing how you guys kind of got started and never stopped. We need more people like you just to, to keep it going. And luckily, we have a lot of people in this book that are doing the same thing. So It is. It's wonderful. And thank you. Thanks for having me. The original music in this podcast is performed by Kevin Allen. It's not complicated. Who happens to have cystic fibrosis. We all got our worries and fears. I know what's got you frustrated. But loving you is so all right. This has been the Living with Cystic Fibrosis podcast. For more information and to learn more about the Bonnell Foundation, visit our website at thebonnellfoundation.org. That's the B-O-N-N-E-L-L foundation.org. This podcast was sponsored by Beatrice, Genentech, and Vertex. It was produced by Jag and Detroit Podcasts. Follow our show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening right now.